out in the wilderness in the middle of the winter, roasted and ginny. Yeah, we're gonna discuss. Five you shooting them out me? Oh man, you're just in time. Have you ever found yourself in a similar situation? No. Staying warm outside in winter time is not. A... Could you man the camera, by the way? Yep. Okay, high five. Okay, first of all, let's check what we have. Okay, this is very good. Basically, our head is a huge radiator. It has a lot of blood flow, but very little fat. So always make sure to keep your head covered. You can also lose a lot of heat from unprotected neck, wrists, and ankles. So make sure to cover up those as well. Mittens are usually better at keeping your hands warmer than ordinary gloves because the fingers are together, so it generates more heat, but they also limit your mobility, so this choice is up to you. I'm gonna put them on later when I'm walking. Okay, we have a knife, a lighter, sunglasses, a cup, some snacks, and a small bottle of water. These are surely gonna come in handy later. Oh, we have a couple of sweaters. It is usually much better to wear two, three thinner layers than one thick sweater because it's not only clothes that keep you warm, but also air that is trapped inside and between the clothes. More layers means more air means you're getting warmer. Actually, it's getting pretty chilly in here, so let's move. Everyone knows that moving around will get you warmer, but it is just as important to keep your own pace to prevent overheating and sweating. The moment you start to sweat, your body is going to start evaporating the sweat, which draws heat away from your body, eventually cooling you down. It is much better to remove some clothes in order to prevent sweating in case you're overheating, but if you already started to sweat, removing clothes will only cool you down further. So be very careful. I'm sure most of you have noticed that sometimes when it's bright and snowy outside, it gets difficult to see anything. There's a condition called snow blindness, which is caused by sun's ultraviolet rays reflecting off the snow into your eyes. In some cases, this could even cause permanent eye damage. So just like in summer, you might want to carry a pair of sunglasses. In conditions like these, frostbite is your worst enemy. It happens when you expose your skin to the cold environment and it gets progressively more dangerous as the wind speeds increase. Your feet, hands and exposed facial areas usually are affected first. You might want to stay away from open areas like these in windy conditions. To counteract that, a good way to warm up your palms and fingers is to put them under your armpits, which are usually your body's warmest points in freezing conditions. Obviously fire is very good when you're cold. It not only provides the means to melt the snow or heat your food, but it also provides light and can be such a huge psychological boost when you're tired and exhausted. But lighting a fire in these conditions might not always be easy. Birch bark can work as very good natural tinder. It's also good to know that some wood burns easier than others. For example, pine trees contain resins that create darker smoke, but it is also fairly easy to light. So small pine branches would be a good choice to get the fire started. But then switching to hardwoods later on can help with longer, slower burns. Don't forget to drink water. One way to tell if you're dehydrated is to check the color of your pee. The darker it is, the worse the dehydration. But I'm sure you can try that one at home. Now a good thing about winters is that you have tons and tons of water around you. But don't be tempted to eat snow because it will drop your core temperature. And that's the last thing you want to be doing when you're trying to warm up. Melting it in some kind of a container would be your best option. But if you don't have an option to make a fire, you can also put the snow in a bowl and keep it somewhere close to your body, but not touching the skin so it doesn't cool you down. Because of the way snow is formed, it doesn't have any minerals, so consuming more than a liter a day over a period of a couple of days can have harmful effects on your body. That's why mountain climbers usually add a bit of salt, tea or soup into the snow water to increase mineralization. In our case, we can make some pine tea. Collect some pine needles and put them in almost boiling water. Don't put them in boiling water because that would destroy a lot of the vitamins. Also, a small tip for when you want to sit on the ground, make sure to put something on it first, like a backpack, to insulate your buns from the cold.
Every time you're thinking about doing something dangerous, make sure you plan it out to minimize the risks involved. Dealing with injuries is extremely difficult in cold weather. I love you guys, so don't put yourself in any unnecessary danger. Hey Vsauce, Michael here. So to summarize, always cover your head, wear clothing in layers, set your face to keep you from sweating, use eye protection when needed, minimize exposed skin, especially in wind, light fires when you can, keep yourself hydrated and fed, don't sit on the ground, don't put yourself in unnecessary danger. Now a good thing about winters is that you have tons and tons of water around you, but don't be eaten, don't be eaten to tempt snow. <laughs> <laughs>